Okay, let's set this character up now with a displacement map. So what I'm going to do is I'm going to do a render of this and just show you what we've got at present. So this is our model at the moment. Let's do a little bit of a better render here. You can't really see you can't really see the detail. So I'll just zoom in on this character a bit more and do a render of this. Okay, that's better. Right, now to apply the uh, displacement map, we're going to do a couple of things. First thing we're going to do is we're going to select the body and we're going to go up to window. I'm going to go to rendering and then we're going to go to mental ray and appro approximation editor. Now with this, make sure the geometry is selected. We're going to create a new subdivision like this. If I come back to my tools up the top, I can close this now because I've created created this. I can then hit the edit here and it will give me my mental ray subdivision approximation so I can close that there. What we need to do in the subdivision surface quality is change this to spatial we need to say the length is 0 0.01 and minimum subdivision levels we're going to put that on 2 and we're going to raise this to 6 okay now we're going to go into windows and we're going to click on the windows rendering editor and then hypershade again and we're going to click the body and we're going to map the network and we're going to come down to the Fong shading group down here which will appear up here and we're going to now we've got this option to add a displacement map so we we'll click the checkbox there and then we'll click file and then we'll just go into the file and we'll select the displacement map now we need to come down to the color balance and this is where it will actually show the displacement, um, the value of the displacement. So you can't see anything on the model because it's not rendering it out. But um, let me just do a render of this as is and you will see the effect. This is just the default settings. But remember I've applied that approximation editor to it when we set a spatial length um, and set that to 0 0.01 so that will basically is a distance between where it will subdivide the model up so if I now save this image back and render this out right well <laughs> it's really um, pushed that out at an extreme um, as you can see and this is where you need to do some little changes to get this to work so um, we'll do those now and basically what's happening is it's just pushing it out and there's no alpha offset and the gain is probably too high what you need to do with the alpha offset is make sure that it's half of the alpha gain we can use an expression but I'm just going to manually put this in here so I'm going to do um, 0 0.05 um, negative and I know I'm going to have to bring this all down but we'll have a look at it now as you can see getting much better <laughs> so um, We'll bring him right down now. I'm going to put this at um, probably 0 0.5. Let's just do halves. Remember, this is half of that distance negative. So let's apply it again, and you'll slowly see it will sort of come down into into how we expect it. That's looking better already. So that's good, still too much. So we'll take this down to not point 
0.2 and 0 0.01 let's have a look at this that's because of my setting here isn't correct and that's pretty good and that's it that's pretty good so now if we look at this um, and what we had before you can see the displacement has worked brilliantly look at these edges all of them are nice and smooth and if we go back to there there's not because there's no displacement it's just using the bump mapping so it's basically using the geometry that you've got straight from the um, straight from ZBrush outputted and this is why it's really important um, when you output your mesh from ZBrush that you try to work try to get everything as smooth as possible before exporting that mesh out so that is setting up a displacement map it's pretty easy you can fiddle around with those uh, adjustments um, and uh, and that's pretty cool so what I'm going to do now is just put some lighting around this. So I'm just going to go to Mental Ray. I'm going to go to Indirect Lighting here. And I'm going to create, in here we've got Physical Sun and Sky. I'm just going to drop that in. It's given me a little arrow for the direction of the light. And we can actually come up here and go Use All Lights. And if I turn this direction of light, you can get it to just how you want it. Moving it this way doesn't affect it, it's merely the direction. The direction of light casts shadow rays all over the surface and it's just the direction that changes it. So I'm going to just chopple it that way. I'm going to zoom back in on this character and now I'm going to do another render. It takes a bit longer with this. So there you go, you've got an actual lighting set up there. There's still a few things that need to be sorted out with it. And if you come into these options over this side, you'll see we can turn the intensity down. The sun direction, got physical physical sun and sky. You can go and play around with these settings. And you can use a use a background there's loads of settings in there it's basically just to have a have a look at it have a play with it and also realize that as you turn it it's like the Sun going down so you get a sort of night kind of look if you turn it in more of an angle it's basically based on how the Sun will be in the sky and what angle it will be facing so if I do another render of this There we go, more of a kind of night kind, nighttime kind of shot. So that's uh, applying the physical sun and sky to this. And now I'm going to just go into showing you how to rig the anim the um, rig rig the character. I'm just gonna I'm gonna do a little bit of it, just show you briefly how it works, and then I think that's it. We've kind of finished the course.